Okay, this is the craters of the moon lava flows. So it's erupted, as you can see, maybe ooh, eight times, and they've dated each of the individual lava flows. And it turns out that this place has been spewing forth lava about every 2,000 years. And the actual reason why this is here is um, what was the Yellowstone hotspot, the crustal plate moved over it, which sort of melted this huge tract up here. Um, and now sits over Yellowstone, which is somewhere up there. And because the um, because of the eruptions that have happened here from the supervolcano, the crust has since been weakened, which is why you now get these basaltic lava flows coming out here. Okay, this is the top of Infernal Crater. And as you can tell, it's probably a 40 mile an hour wind blowing. Far, far too windy to fly the planes. Um, this is just to give you some idea of what Craters of the Moon is like. I'm so on top of a, a, a cinder cone at the moment, and there are spatter cones directly in front of you. And I'm going to give you a quick description of how all this works. And that's the planes of Idaho over there, the Snake Plateau. So imagine this this bar here is the Earth's. Um, continental crust. Continental crust is about 10% lighter than the oceanic crust, but when the oceanic crust melts, it expands and it pushes through the continental crust. But on the way it melts a load of the continental crust, so the first thing that you get when the magma reaches the surface is this massive explosion of what's called rhyolite. It's like molten continental crust. And then followed up behind that, you get this stuff which is, um, this is the basalt, which is essentially melted oceanic crust, but it's got lots of gases dissolved in it, and when it hits the surface, they all expand and come out of solution. So this basalt, even though if it were actually a solid piece of rock, would be quite dense, is actually inflated and puffed up, such that it's on average quite light. So this is the first stuff to come out of the ground. This is, um, and this comes out in cinticone, so it sort of sprays up into the air, and the rocks in, and the rocks inflate, um, and over a period of time, the the the, the gases that were dissolved in the rock um, become less, and then you start moving on to other things. There and lava flows, which I'm going to visit next. Okay, that's the cinticone I was just on, and that's the spaticone. The primary difference between the two is the cinticones come first. So just after the lava has made it, the, sorry, the magma has made it to the surface, and all the rhyolites exploded off, then you get the degassing, uh, very violent degassing, like taking the top of a pop bottle, which gets you this. Um, oceanic basalt, which is really inflated with gases, and that gets you your cinticones. And then, as the gas sort of comes out, you get onto the spaticones, where there's much less gas dissolved in them. So, if you actually look, they look like they're made up of a load of blobs stuck together. Um, then, after it's almost entirely degassed, you get onto the lava. Okay, so we're we'll moving through the cinticone where you get the most violent degassing and you get sort of this stuff which is really um, airy basalt. I mean it's all it's all the same stuff. All of this is basically the same stuff. It's just as this has lots of air bubbles in it. Then you get onto the spatacones, which have significantly less ga um, gas bubbles in them. Um, and they, they form these sort of conglomerate cones, spatter cones. Then you go into the lava flows and there's the, this sort of stuff which looks ropey or like it's it's stopped in in in, in mid flow or something. And this is the, the first lava that comes out. It's very hot, very fluid. And this is called oi, which is quite comfortable to walk in. Then as this cools it essentially gets uh, more and more viscous, and eventually those blocks, that, 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 that viscosity causes it to break up into lumps like this, which are very sharp, 
and it's very uncomfortable to walk on, especially in bare feet. And at this point, the the lava flow, which was initially a, a kind of like a running river, which is this stuff, has set into um, it's al it almost looks like a moving slag heap of very hot rocks, and this is called um, ah. Boy, boy, boy.